earthquakes or windstorms, bushfires, we're trying to think of the cyber equivalent of that. It's a bit of an interesting challenge as an actuary. We don't have these nice data sets and you just pick numbers from it pretty easily and job done. We really have to think outside the box. 2016 and 2017 were interesting times from a cyber risk perspective. The one attack that I thought was quite interesting that happened last year was called Petya or Not Petya, a ransomware-based attack. If you think about the motivation of the hacker, that sounds like they're trying to make some money. That was really a smokescreen. The hackers had no intention of collecting money. They really wanted to cause damage and destruction. A hacker that just wants to cause damage is going to be much more dangerous than someone who's looking to make money. Traditionally, war is carried out with you know, physical weapons and we're moving more into a, a cyber area. There is a case for a kind of Geneva Convention equivalent for cyber. Most of the attacks that happen on a daily basis are financially motivated, so looking to make a buck, but the bigger, scarier ones, which we're more interested in, is about causing destruction. The potential consequences of a, of a widespread internet outage are, are vast and we're really working with our researchers and also with governments and with internet service providers to try to understand the problem better and work out if it's something that we as the insurance industry could provide coverage for or maybe it's something where we're just not ready to do that because the, the potential is bigger than our balance sheet. We wouldn't have enough money to pay for the losses. It's really a combination of those traditional statistical skills but actually researching the topic and, and approaching it from a more kind of hypothetical point of view about what, what could happen. There's various sources of, of risks that could cause an internet outage. Some of them could be nation state sponsored groups of hackers or it could be something accidental. So there's these undersea cables that connect uh, the UK and Europe to the US and it, it's imaginable that those cables could be cut accidentally by a ship passing through the wrong spot or something like that. Manufacturing plants, cargo ships, to various extents they're going to be reliant on technology and there could be things that could fail which cause physical loss. One of the scariest things I've seen in, in the last couple of years um, was a hack that occurred in the Ukraine where a power plant was targeted by a group of hackers. These hackers were basically able to take out power in a region of the Ukraine for a number of hours. But you can imagine if it happened in the UK or the US and it happened for a number of hours, but you can imagine if it happened for days, then you know, catastrophic effects, riots. We're trying to understand the problem better to, to cut through just fear and get, get the facts. So, okay, it could be possible, but are we talking about 1% you know, probability next year or 0.1% probability? Um, to try and bring a bit more common sense to it as well, rather than just fear-mongering. We're in the business of doing educated guessing about the future. We really have to go beyond the data and figure out how to do it without data, so it's, it's uh, an interesting challenge.